Good evening everyone, and welcome back to Vada's Tomb King playthrough, focusing on High Queen Kalida. In the last episode, we struck back against the dwarves, defeating a couple of their major armies. However, we are now at war with Krokgar, and that means that our western flank is under threat. However... Yeah. Kalida is in prime position to strike back against the dwarves and make her way towards the Lost Plateau. So that's where her army is going to begin to move to this turn. We're going to occupy Granite Massif. And if they attack us, we'll deal with those orcs and their rebellion Unleashing next chance. turn. We are one turn away from finishing recruitment on King Jenna. And moving him across to try and deal with Krokgar. I don't think he stands much of a chance, but... Well, I'm not just going to roll over and give my territory away for free now, am I? So, we are going to leave that there for this turn and we'll see what happens as the other factions take their moves all right we finished our research we can take a look at that we have now got an extra spot for tomb princes what are we going to take a look at over here we have nehekara warriors and chariot units those will be our front line for a little while but, do we have anything better? Necropolis Knights and Screaming Skulls, Tomb Guard, Embedded Heroes, Hyra Titans and Tomb Guard, Wisdom of the Fourth Dynasty looking pretty promising, Necrosphinx Units, Ushabti, War Sphinx, hmm. Tricky, tricky. Because we've got this one with the Tomb Scorpion and the Carrion and the Sepulchral Stalkers. So I think we'll go for Wisdom of the Fourth to buff up our front line in those Tomb Guards just a little bit. Now, Kalida, I know I said she was going to go and fight the Dwarves. And at the time, that was what I thought she was going to do. However, I am concerned. This unit here with Krokgar has... Lots of Saurus, a good amount of range, and some gold chevron dinosaurs, which Jenna's army is not very well equipped to deal with. So instead, I am going to force march Jenna to Marak and then to Granite Massif. And I am going to send Kalida down to Rosetra. I'm not going to put her in the city because I don't want her to take damage. But you can see that Krokgar is taking attrition. And if we wanted to and we had the money, we could double that attrition. But I'm, I'm not too worried about that right now. We're going to upgrade Marak. We're going to try and get some more money from our other territories. Because right now, as is the want of the Tomb Kings, we're not making very much cash at all. Got a couple of Skaven heroes running around, which is annoying. Because I would very much like them to not assassinate my things. And we have a war targeted towards the Misty Mountain. Which is why it is gro glowing green, I believe. I'm not sure which orc has declared that war, but that's interesting. We'll have to watch out. We might have some rampaging orcs on our border very shortly. My glory. Our friend, Vissus Gobspit, who I was thinking about eradicating, has decided that he is going to try and resurrect, or at least uh, reconsolidate orcish presence in these mountains. And so I think we'll let him wreak havoc. On the dwarves for a little while longer before we take any actions against him and his forces. Let's see what Krokgar does. All right, Krokgar besieged Rosetra. 
I have High Queen Kalida there, and I think that means that we are just going to declare battle. It says Pyrrhic victory. Now, looking at this, there's a lot of Saurus warriors. That means our front line is going to struggle to hold up, especially with a weaker Lich Priest than we had previously. But we have our Sepulchral Stalkers, we have our Cavalry, our Tomb Scorpion, our Necrotect. I'm feeling pretty good that if we focus fire the archers correctly onto the Stegodon, take out the heroes with ranged power, that we will be able to put a dent in their forces. So, let's time. Let's get skeletons on the ground. Okay, we are on the ground and we can see that Kropgar's forces are neatly aligned here. In straight battle formation, we have the Saurus Warriors along the front here. Krokgar himself and his hero in the center here. Looking very, very scary on their Cold One mounts. We've got a number of Skink Skirmishers reinforcing the line. And over here, on this... Uh, our right hand, their left hand flank, we have what I'm most worried about. It is the double whammy of the Stegodon. Look at that beautiful dinosaur. And the Cold One Riders. I don't think these are Horned One Riders. Let's take a quick look. No, they're Cold One Spear Riders. Okay, that works. So, what I have done to counter this is I have set up our forces with the Necropolis Knights our Tomb Scorpion, and our Ushbati Great Bows. Over on this flank to counteract their heavy hitters, I've got our cavalry. I think I'm actually going to deploy them slightly further out to the left, watching this flank with the Saurus. Our Sepulchral Stalkers, ready to get into the back line and wreak some havoc. And a front line here, ready to absorb what we can. Their line is significantly wider. We are going to struggle with flanks, but there are weak points. This flank here has... the heavy hitters, whereas this flank over here is mostly, I mean, it's its just Saurus. Uh, and that's terrifying against skeletons, but, you know, we can deal with it. It's all going to come down to how we use our ranged and whether we use it effectively enough. We have our reinforcements here, some extra warriors just to throw into the, uh, the bone grinder, some more archers. They're coming in in two and a half minutes. So there's going to be quite a lot of fighting that's going to go on before that. I'm trying to spread our leadership aura out here and keep the Necrotect in range of the Tomb Scorpion to keep it nice and healed. We do have the Restless Dead, so we are going to be relying a lot on the healing that can come out of our units. I'm hoping, against hope, that Krokgar decides to be very passive. Because if he decides to be very passive, we can speed this up and I can expand our line. And that looks like what he's doing. So for now, I'm going to hit the times 3 button and we'll resume either when our reinforcements get here or something else happens. Right, we are in much the same setup. Our reinforcements have arrived and have been deployed. We're going to shuffle our catapults slightly further forwards into range. And when that happens, we should see the lizards begin to respond. Because the bombardment will have begun. Looks like we need to just quickly inch forward here. Come on, are you really not in range? You can hit that unit, surely. Come on. Okay, shuffling forward. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And open fire! <laughs> I don't know where they're shooting, but let's get a nice view of the enemy lines here. I'm sure we'll find out where they're shooting soon enough. Oh, very nice. Jibbed a few of them this time. Again, it's not necessarily about doing much damage uh, with the artillery, although the more of it we do, the better. 
This is about goading them into giving up their defensive line so that we can begin to maneuver forces around the outside. I think they need some accuracy lessons, but, uh, you know, catapults like this are not the most, ooh, lovely, accurate of things, but when they do hit, they do a great job. Look at that, that's a half-health Saurus unit already. Those catapults are doing a good job of softening up our opposition. And the longer Krokgar allows this to happen, the better a position we will be in. I'm going to start preemptively moving the Sepulchral Stalkers round to the side here. While our catapults do their work. And there it is. Now the lines are beginning to move. We'll get a few more shots with the catapults. So we are going to pick our targets. As the Blessed Saurus Warriors for now. Now that they are in range. And see if we can't weaken the strongest Saurus Warriors on the enemy side. It missed, but it did jib several skinks, which is nice. You know, shooting at the front often means that overshoots will go into the back line, and that's very handy. It looks like we got a couple of good hits there into the Blessed Saurus Warriors. That's what we like to see. The more damage that comes down on their important units, the better. And they plumped up. We hit two units with one shot there. Very nice. Looks like the Ushabti Great Bows are firing. So let's make sure that they are targeting what I want them to shoot. Which is the Federal Stegodon. Not really interested in anything else. Let's quickly get the Necropolis Knights and the Scorpion here to charge in. We've got our archers beginning to get into range. Once they are in range, of course, we'll just let them do their job. The stalkers are now way out of position because I didn't move them up fast enough. But we are in position now with archers firing. Did take a hefty hit on our front line there. So let's quickly just get this uh, protection onto those skeleton warriors. And that comet was just nasty. But we are trading very favorably. Uh, I'm just going to give some of the archers here because of the map-wide healing that we get from spells. Looks like those Cold One Riders have been pretty effectively jibbed. Let's get some focus onto these skinks in the back line from Kalida. And then we need to send somebody to deal with Croc Gar. We can see that our cavalry is being intercepted. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drop a heal on our Tomb Scorpion because holy is that Tomb Scorpion taking some damage. Let's pull our forces out here. Redeploy our archers to shoot into that unit there. Our Tomb Guard are winning this fight so let's get the Ushabti Warriors in onto the middle and help them out. Let's push our spearmen forward here. Pivot the archers in the center to start landing some focus fire. And we'll drop a Helm of Discord just to help our forces out. As well as an incantation of Jaff, I think it is. We've got the healing going down onto the Tomb Scorpion right now, which is nice. Obviously, it's not going to salvage everything. I'm going to let the Ushabti Bows tank for just a little bit. But this is where the cavalry really needs to start making odds and ends. We can see that the flank over there is crumbling. So I am going to send the majority of my flanking cav forces out to that side. I'm going to redeploy these Nehekara warriors to make sure that they are in combat. And we are going to begin just launching arrows onto that side of the battle. We're going to cease the artillery firing. I don't want the friendly fire. Let's quickly just do some crowd controlling. This isn't necessarily a good fight for Kalida, but I'd rather Kalida with her heftier um, HP pool was in there. We're going to use her Venom Staff ability on these Saurus Warriors here, and we're going to pivot this Cavalry Charge into the rear. Make sure that that does as much damage as possible. Alright, these Shabti Warriors are struggling. The Necropolis Knights are kind of covering for them right now, so let's get that Tomb Scorpion back in 
our Necrotect will be able to heal him, and we can break this flank over here with a good Ushabti summon. We can see that this half of the battlefield is ours now. We are losing some health on the Sepulchral Stalkers over there. I'm going to get the archers just to retarget some of these fleeing units, push the Tomb Guard forward. Redeploying everything now to this side over here. We did lose a unit, which sucks, but, you know, I think it was one of the garrison ones. If it wasn't, we can probably replace it. It did look like it was a fairly bog-standard unit of something or other. Which I realise is a terribly specific descriptor. Alright, the Ushabti bows are back. The Feral Stegodon is still in the fight, and the... Necropolis Knights are struggling right now against the Spears, so let's get them out before they crumble, if we can. We'll give them Jaff's Incantation, and they should get some healing in a second from the uh, Army Passive, I think it is. Let's get Kalida back onto the fight here, push our Ushabti forward. It's not a good fight for Kalida against him, but she does have the Helm of Discord which she can drop, and also her own abilities. So, while she might not be in the best position soloed out here with some archer support, the Venom Staff ability, and the Helm of Discord, I think, at very least, we'll be able to run her away while we get something slightly more favourable down into that fight. We have another Restore here, which we're going to drop onto the Tomb Scorpion. Uh, hopefully that doesn't crumble. If we lose our Tomb Scorpion, it's not the end of the world. I can re-recruit it, but I'd really rather not lose the experience on this one. And that's the route. So, if we end the battle fast enough, nothing should crumble. Um, I mean, it is being restored. Will the crumbling stay? I think so. Uh, okay, let, let's see if we can hunt down Krokgar. But let's keep an eye on our Tomb Scorpion's health over here, 400, 386. Can we bring it in range of a hero? Or a Necrotect? Give it some extra HP. Stop the crumbling. No. Okay, before we lose our Tomb Scorpion, we are going to take the Pyrrhic victory and end the battle there. Ultimately, that was fairly decisive. I did lose some things here. But the nice thing about the Tomb Kings is it doesn't cost you anything as long as you have the building. So we should be able to recover from that battle very nicely indeed. Pound for pound, they're better, and we traded roughly equally, even if we did have 200, uh, 200 times the units. What did we lose? We we lost a unit of Sepulchral Stalkers and a unit of Nehekara Horsemen. Uh, we'll take the casualty replenishment. And then because we can... We'll get some more stuff back in a moment. But can I take that out without losing anything? It's gonna it's gonna cost me my tomb scorpion on the auto resolve, isn't it? Alright everyone. I played out the battle, the the decisive victory against Krokgar, and basically my archers shot him, he ran away, we didn't lose the tomb scorpion. However, after that big battle, we did have some replenishing of units to do, and so I thought that I would just keep you guys in the loop with what we're doing here. We are going to dismiss a unit of spearmen, and regiment of renown recruit the Kepra Guard, the Tomb Kings for our army. Uh, sorry, not the Tomb Kings, we are the Tomb Kings, the Tomb Guard, there we go. And Kalida, now that Krokgar made this decision a lot simpler for us, I realise we've changed our mind a couple of times based on circumstances, is going to begin to push into the lands of Forek Ironbrow. King Jenna, on the other hand, is going to disband a couple of these units 
and recruit the ne Nehekara horsemen that were replaced by the Tomb Scorpions in Kalida's army. So what we're racking, rack no, racking, what we're running now is a couple of Tomb Scorpions, a few of them even, with a Necrotect. We've got quite the heavy division with a relatively small infantry line. We've got lots of things that can hit hard, hit fast, get in, get out, and the Necrotect to back them up. We're going to quickly level up uh, Assyrian's Incantation of Vengeance on our mage, who leveled up at the start of the turn. And let's take a look at what buildings we can upgrade. We can put something in Granite Massif, so we're going to put a Mortuary House there. We are going to try and increase the growth in that region so that we can put higher tech buildings there and expand our armies. We're going to do exactly the same thing in Libaris and keep getting Lamia and the Crater of the Waking Dead up to snuff. Next turn, we're going to march on Mount Arachnos, so I'll see you there. I have no interest in you, creature. Oh, Forek wants peace. He clearly is not feeling too good about his position since we beat his army. And to this, I say no. You attacked me unprovoked, and now you are going to suffer. Okay, at the start of the turn, we can see that this orc is still walking around in my lands. I'm not overly fond of it, but I'll allow it for now. We're going to keep marching our way towards Camp Arachnos, and we can see that they have a very small army, so we should be able to deal with that if that doesn't improve. Same as last time, going to drop some upgrades into our growth buildings, and in Rosetra, because we don't have one already, I am going to build a Charnel Plaza. It's an income building that also gives us extra movement speed so that we can catch up with any of those pesky armies that decide to give us a run around in our own territories. Let's see how Krokgar is feeling. He probably doesn't want a peace treaty. Uh, he's pretty close to it, but no, he doesn't want one right now. So we can't just uh, say, look, we have a spat. Can we move on? Uh, I like the lizards. I'm a lizard man player on tabletop, or Seraphon as they're now called. Uh, so, you know, I might have been lenient in my benevolence, but uh, they don't want it, so we won't give it to them. They want to pay me for a non-aggression pact? Absolutely. 300 gold for not attacking an army I wasn't going to attack anyway? Sure thing. Let's take a look at Forex army. It's pretty weak, but there are two of them, and I'm not sure that on our own we would be able to take that out. So let's see if we can split them up. I'm going to move further down the ravine. Apparently, we'll take attrition wherever we go here, which is interesting. Um, and once we're out of that attrition zone, I am going to adopt the channeling stance and see if they come and challenge me. There might be a couple of turns of waiting here just to see what Forek does. Uh, maybe we'll attack Karag. A rud and try and pull their two armies apart. We'll see. We might need to move Jenna up into the mountains with us, but I don't want to do that while he has the plague in case he spreads it. Let's quickly upgrade our buildings and then we'll uh, we'll be back when the dwarves do something or I attack a city. Uh, 
Okay, it looks like Forek is moving out of his city. So we, instead of attacking uh, Karagorud, we are going to drop into ambush stance in this choke point and see if we can ambush his army. If we get the surround off with our superior range and a lot of our damage, we should be able to avoid the miners with blasting charges with our infantry. But uh, we'll talk about that more if and when it occurs. Alright, perfect. Forek has stumbled into our ambush. And I think it's time we taught him who the true ruler of these mountains is going to be. Welcome everyone to this battle, the fall of Thoric Ironbrow II, the movie you never knew you wanted, but are glad you got anyway, or at least I hope you are. We got this ambush, we are going to make them suffer. Get the Necropolis Knights in the trees over there, we're going to set up as much of a surround as possible. Uh, we want to hit the archers and they're all nicely clumped, which is why the Tomb Scorpions are at the back. I'm going to hide our Necrotect in the trees over here. So that he can launch some restores onto the Tomb Scorpions if necessary. We're going to deploy our archers in the trees so that they can immediately begin shooting. And the reason we've got this Tomb Scorpion here is so that he can get into the miners with the blasting charges. And keep them from connecting with our squishy infantry underbelly. The Ushabti Greatbows are going to come up here. So that they can kind of strafe the army a little bit. As are the Catapults and the Ushabti and Kalida are going to take a position here. Just so that they can come down and block any attempts at escape. Alright, relatively straightforward battle plan. Let's get to it. Before the archers can split up, we're wanting to get as many of them in as possible. And onto the ones with the blasting charges. We're going to get the Sepulchral Stalkers focusing in on this line here. We can see that the Catapults are already finding some of the enemy. This is wonderful news. Oh, good lord, look at the damage. The friendly fire from those blasting charges just ripped the Quarrelers apart. We'll deploy some of our infantry now. Kalida is going to come down onto Forek, the Ashabti are going to go and take on the Slayers. It's a bad fight for them. Um, so we will deploy some archers to hit that position there. And we'll get some archers firing into this blob in the middle. Now we are going to put the Incantation of Defense on the Low Health Tomb Scorpion. And we can see that the Dwarf Warriors have engaged the Sepulchral Stalkers in combat. And that's not a good fight for the... Dwarf Warriors, really. We'll put them on melee mode for the time being. We'll get our infantry in to reinforce the Tomb uh, Scorpion there. I don't think the Ushabti need to uh, receive much help from the archers here, but we're going to keep them getting that help just for a moment because I don't want to lose the Ushabti. Now, over here, we can see that the Tomb Scorpions are doing a jolly good job of routing the Quarrelers. We're going to want to keep an eye on those rallying. And we have the Great Clash of Leaders. That should be a pretty good time for us. I'll see if I can get some close-ups of that when I'm more confident that the battle is going in our favour. Looks like we are going to lose the Ushabti over here. I hope not. I hope I can rally them to some leadership in time. Let's get this guy up here, but I'm not sure I can. We're not taking losses, that's the problem, so we're not getting much of our healing. Alright, they have pulled back. They are slowly crumbling, but they've got some HP left. And we have some archers and a lord here just firing into these sli uh, and a uh, and a uh, wizard here just to keep them around nice and high. We've rallied them a little bit with that cast. The catapults are going in. Again, we can't break them and I'm not sure I should commit them into this fight with the Ushabti. I'm just kind of hoping that we can carve apart the unbreakable slayers nice and quick. Alright, over here we are going to deploy the Necrotech towards the fight. We're going to make sure that the Tomb Scorpions here aren't like uh, too disparately spread. 
But I think that in a moment what we're going to see is the mass route. And I will be glad to see it. Oh no. Nope, nope. Stop firing. Stop firing. You're way too close. Uh, let's get the Nehekara warriors into the Quarrelers over here. Again, we're sort of deploying units just to keep the routes from happening. We don't want any focus from the Dwarven Quarrelers to result in massive damage or anything like that. Got the Tomb Scorpions just keeping their work done here. And I think we can now have a look at this duel between Kalida and Thorek. Thorek being carried in the manner of many great dwarves by his bodyguard. That was a big smack back onto Kalida there. Looks like some arrows are coming in. Our archers have decided that they want to help this duel. And we can see the magic of the Vedim staff blasting at the Dwarven leader. In fact, it looks like some Sepulchral Stalkers may be offering some fire as well, but that's alright. I'm not here to play fair, I'm here to kill a Dwarf. And that is it, that is the victory. The Dwarves are well and truly routed today. Let's see if Kalida can take out Thorek. She's on in pursuit. The Necro Serpent about to clash into the back. The magic is being cast. Oh, a lovely hit there. Keep it going, keep it going. They've been stalled. I can't believe those dwarves are still standing. Those sturdy little legs keeping them carrying Thorek. Oh, until Kalida slams into them one last time. A tremendous victory for the Tomb Kings here. I don't know if we need to mop them up because it was a um, an ambush battle, but I'm just going to quickly times three and mop them up. I'll see you on the campaign map. Alright, that was a decisive victory. We are going to take the replenishment and... Yeah, we're going to take the replenishment. Just top our army up a little bit. I was debating Endless March to see if we could get ourselves uh, to Camp Arachnos. It spawned us in a really weird place on the other side of this mountain. Uh, but that's alright. Attack-minded for Kalida. Leadership order size when attacking. Lovely. Defeated dwarves multiple times, leadership when fighting dwarves. That'll help us. Nice. All right, so we got some followers. Um, we got a lot of good stuff there, basically. The goddess wills it. Now, at the end of this turn, so. we could we begin. rush forward and try and take the second dwarven army down. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm considering it. But... As we spend some of our well-earned money on upgrading our cities, I am going to call this an episode. We've got Krokgar returning on one border with a much stronger army this time. We've got Kalida up in the mountains trying to deal with the dwarves. Yeah, it's an exciting position when we come back next time. Will Jenna have to hold Granite Massif against the Dwarves while High Queen Kalida launches another assault against the forces of the Lizards. Find out in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do leave me a like and do have a very good rest of your day wherever you are. Bye-bye.